People, we are talking precision today. And precision <laughs> is what we are going to get, I promise. We can work with these two and start making the jaws of the calipers. And yes, I do have calipers that I'm going to use in this project. But what do you think the first stone tool wasn't made by another stone? I think it was. This gear goes in this already existing hole in my, uh, in my soul, in my, in my brass pieces. And because I'm planning this project like a maniac, uh, then uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, make the linear, how do you call this? Linear gear. And then we'll know how to position it on the jaws. Does it work? Well, let's find out. <laughs> Oops. Okay, it's, uh, that's not too bad. Need to go a little bit deeper, but we try this out. You know what? This, it's not great, this. I think I'm gonna discard the geared mechanism. That doesn't work, uh, the gear is super ugly and I, I don't know what, come on, I'm, it's not. So, uh, we are going to do something else. I don't want to just do a sliding caliper because it's boring and I have that already. So I have an idea and I'm not sure it's gonna work, but I think it's gonna be cool. So let's try it. This thread goes here. Let me put this uh, toothed, one tooth nut, <laughs> I would call it. And when it engages, the thread cannot move, it can only turn. So that's the idea. But why am I whispering? I made a new dovetail slide this way. I have the, uh, the wedge. This goes here. Uh, the, the screw is too short. And the threaded nut enters here. And we have this contraption. Does it, <laughs> does it make sense to you, this uh, thing? Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Shh. 
Schlüpp. Oh yes! We can take advantage of the thread so we can have very uh, very accurate dial with which we can determine uh, very very small distances and I should have gone with an M6 thread because the pitch of an M6 is one millimeter so each revolution would be exactly one millimeter but I already went with the M5 so that's what we are going to do so I need to make a dividing plate where I can make a very accurate markings on my dial scale. Uh, we put some marking fluid also on the... <laughs> oh my god. Don't judge me. Just make a nice circle. Don't I have like markers that can write like a normal person? Seven, a little bit less. So I uh, I got rid of the numbers. I they no they they're not looking good. So I've done it the third third time uh, with the punches, and now it looks wait <laughs> now it looks a little bit better. So. It's gonna look a little bit complex, but it's not. It's just, it's just my my best way to do this. Uh, it's actually very very simple. So the idea here, uh, there's a tiny nut, so I can adjust it. If I need to re-zero the adjustment wheel, then I can lock it. These are just static knobs, and I made them in two parts because, yeah, of course. We'll I did like that. So we need to be able to read the dial. So I need to make another, call it a pointer, if you will.
geklebt. Yeah, I think that look that's uh, pretty good. Okay, I might have made a mistake. As you can see there are two holes. Okay, so I hope you understand <laughs> where I'm going with this. This is going to be the upper jaw, basically, and I need to cut the bottom one. So up until now, I made two hands, these ones. So naturally, the bottom jaw needs to be And I'm actually not 
too worried if the coverage is absolutely perfect. I can live with some, uh, you know, irregularities. Okay. I totally forgot that I need to actually make the scale itself. So, yeah, let's do that. In my standards, it's acceptable. <laughs> the four decided to go for a swim. I'm fine with it if you are. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we're making a precision tool or anything, so I can live with that. So here we go. This is the most precise thing in my shop, I suppose. Uh, I have a, a parallel. This is supposed to be 22 millimeters. So how are we going to measure this? Ah, I need to disengage the half nut and then I can slide it in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's on 22 millimeter actually. So now we know we are exactly in 22 now the real test we dial it to 26 I, I think there's a little bit of flexing in the in the legs <laughs> proof of concept maybe kind of works it's a little bit janky and it's a little bit uh, I mean there's backlash of course because these things usually do oh by the way uh, I made an actual uh, half nut I just drilled a brass rod and tapped it and then I cut it yeah now it works a lot better it engages the threads and it's much smoother and delicious so how, do, how does this go? Uh, nobody blank, Uri Tuchman. I wish there was a device that can bridge the gap between a caliper and a micrometer, right? <laughs> Something like this. Uh, anyway, uh, I love this thing. I think it turned out really great. Of course, I can wish for a little bit more reliable instrument. Uh, Steret, if you're watching this, I would love to see, I would love to see like a real prototype of this that can actually be reliable and stuff like that. Maybe uh, this would be really cool if a machinist that has the skills and the equipment to do this kind of job, but like that looks like like an like an real like a real caliper and stuff like that. Let me know if there's something similar to this. You know, like a quick release micrometer. I suppose I would call it. Of course, it takes the principles from from a lathe or a mill that has a cross slide, and uh, you can fine adjust. And I guess it makes sense why you don't see it on precision instruments because you do have backlash and you do have stuff like that but I don't know well, maybe anyway I'm uh, I want to do something like this for quite a while and I'm happy I took the challenge to do it and I'm missing the set screw where is it anyway uh, anyway I hope you enjoyed this video I uh, yeah I'll see you in the next 
in the next video.